Newton's third law states that whenever one object exerts a force on another object, the first body will experience a force that is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to the force it exerts. A lot of times you will hear it phrased that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. This is a little bit misleading because that particular statement can apply to a lot of things that are technically not forces. Take the swimmer in figure 4.9 of your textbook. She is exerting a force on the wall of the pool with her feet. Because she then accelerates in the opposite direction, there must be a force pushing her in the opposite direction. What we find is that the forces are equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. So a force has a Newton's third law paired force. This paired force is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to the original force. And these forces occur at exactly the same time. Suppose you have a 65 kilogram pers person pushing a 12 kilogram cart with 7 kilograms of equipment. Calculate the acceleration when the person exerts a backwards force of 150 newtons on the floor. All forces opposing the motion total 24 newtons. The key here is to identify the system correctly. There are a lot of things we could choose, but when we look at what the question is asking, we are looking at the acceleration caused by the person walking. Since she is pushing on the cart, that is affecting the force she is applying and therefore her acceleration. So we need to define the system as the person in the cart with everything on it. In this diagram, this is represented as system number one. We can simplify this by drawing a free body diagram of the system. Since there is no vertical motion, the force of gravity must be balanced by the normal force. We can ignore the effect of the vertical forces and focus on what is happening with the horizontal motion. The person is exerting a force to the right. We can label this as an applied force since this force is accomplished by pushing on the floor. There is also the force of friction acting opposite the applied force. Since the cart is changing velocity, that must mean that the friction force is less than the applied force in this instance. In order to find the acceleration, we need to know the net force and the mass of the system. We know that the net force acting in a direction is the sum of all of the forces in that direction. Direction of the force is important here. The applied force of 150 newtons acts in the positive direction, while the friction force of 24 newtons acts in the negative direction. So the sum of those forces turns out to be 126 newtons in the positive direction. Since we defined our system as the person and everything on the cart, we use the mass of the person, cart, and supplies as our total mass. So now we know the total mass of the system and the net force exerted on the system. We can then plug this into Newton's second law equation to solve for an acceleration of 1.5 meters per second squared. The second part of the example wants to know what is the force a person exerts on the cart. So even though we are dealing with the same situation, our system is going to change based on what we want to know. If we are looking at the force exerted on the cart, then it becomes convenient to label our cart as the system in the question. So in this situation, system 2 is defined as the cart and its supplies. We again want to draw out a free body diagram to help us visualize the forces. So we are looking for the force exerting on the cart. The net force can be calculated using mass and acceleration. The mass of the cart and supplies totals 19 kilograms and the acceleration was calculated in the last problem as 1.5 meters per second squared. Now what we just calculated was the net force and we are looking specifically for the force the professor exerts. We know that the net force is the sum of the applied force and the frictional force of the cart. We just found the net force and we were given the frictional force, so all we really need to do is plug in those numbers to get our applied force of 53 newtons. 